I'm pulling off the road really quickly because there's some bison rolling around in the dirt over here in the distance. Good morning. I'm just outside of Grand Teton National Park. You could see the Grand Teton mountain range back here in the distance. And I'm doing my first ever solo dispersed camping. And I'm inside of a national forest just a few feet outside of the Grand Teton National Park. In fact, you can see this tree line back over here. That's the national park. And this is the national forest. So dispersed camping is allowed in the national forest, but not in the national park. So they don't want you crossing over that line. But over here, there's absolutely gorgeous forest. It's really beautiful here, wildflowers, and a magnificent, incredible view in the distance of the mountains. I'm going to get the step van warmed up and travel about an hour up to Yellowstone National Park. The two parks are just adjacent to each other. Uh, Teton is on the south and Yellowstone is on the north. I'm going to tour around Yellowstone for the day and then I think I'll exit heading west, um, continuing on my trek towards Portland to my sister's house. Typically I start up the step van and let it run for, oh, probably five to ten minutes. It just depends on how cold it is. It's a little bit cooler this morning, so I might let it run 10, 12, 13 minutes until it's running really smooth. And so when I go up and down in RPMs, I don't see any uh, little um, exhaust smoke going out. So anyway, sometimes when it's uh, cold, it's a little bit harder to start. Let it warm up here. All right. I don't have glow plugs. I have a uh, like a gas heater or a fuel heater system. Usually while it's warming up, that's when I brush my teeth, I go around, check the tires, make sure everything's secured inside, do anything else I can think of that needs to be done before I actually depart the area. I've arrived at the Yellowstone Visitor Center, which is behind me. I'm parked out in the bus and RV parking area, so I've got to walk inside and uh, see what there is to see. I've been to Yellowstone twice before. Once when I was about 12 years old, I went to a scout camp for one week just outside of Yellowstone. And the very last day as we left camp, we toured through Yellowstone Park just for the day. And we stopped at a number of sites. Um, I think probably most of the main tour sites. And then I came back when I was in my mid 20s during the winter so that was my first time to come here in the winter and rented a snowmobile uh, with a group of people and then just snowmobiled around and had a great time was only here maybe three days that time so I've not really spent much time here and certainly not as an adult so I'm really looking forward to uh, exploring this during the day I think I'll be here probably one day maybe two uh, just sort of depends on availability of places for me to park overnight and I'm running low on food so uh, the price of food here is pretty crazy. Anyway, I'm going to head inside and uh, talk to the visitor center and get a recommendation on some things to see. An interesting bit of trivia for those of you traveling to Yellowstone. Uh, there is no free Wi-Fi within the park. However, in Teton, there is. You can find free Wi-Fi at the laundromat, free Wi-Fi at the visitor center. Um, it's very easy there. Um, here you have to pay for your Wi-Fi. Um, also, there are no power outlets allowed for use of visitors here. So if you need to charge anything up, a laptop, camera batteries, things like that, um, you'll need to have your own source in your vehicle or what I did was hunt around the outside of the building and I found a power outlet there to be able to charge so anyway that's uh, just a couple of tips for visiting Yellowstone I have a several maps here and I need to actually get some fuel today and I'm gonna pay the premium price here in the park I filled up just before entering the park, but uh, 
need to fill up here in the park, you're gonna pay the premium, just so I'm able to drive around today. And I think the plan after this is to head into Montana. I'm fueling up now. If you want to know how much fuel is for diesel here in the park, it's $2.89 a gallon. And I can't see the prices right now because I'm fueling for unleaded, but I imagine it's pretty expensive too. I'm pulling off the road really quickly because there's some bison pulling around in the dirt over here in the distance. Hopefully I can get them on camera. Well, that was really fun. I, I think I managed to get some of that on video, but they, there's like three bison over there and one of them is just like rolling around in the dirt and kicking up a whole bunch of dust. I pulled off for one of the first stops behind me are the mud volcanoes. You can see it's extremely muddy and all the steam is rising up. Pretty cool stuff. It's starting to rain. I'm gonna head back into the step van. I'm gonna drive a little bit further, find a pull off, a nice private area, get some lunch, maybe take a nap. I think I'm driving through a hailstorm. I can see the hail hitting the ground and popping up, and it sounds like the friction is every time it's hitting the windshield at the top of the vehicle. It appears there's no damage to the step van from the hailstones. They were just really tiny, uh, just more like, um, I don't know, like peas or something like that. So pretty small. I'm at the Norris Geyser Basin now. I'm gonna go out and check out some geysers. I stopped here on the trail. It's a great viewpoint. You can see down into the basin and see all the geysers. And then there's a little um, half mile loop that goes around this basin area with all the geysers. And walk around. This is actually quite fun walking through these uh, little tr pine trees here on one side, walking down the wood trail, and on the other side, all the geysers. One of the things I love about national parks are all the international tourists that we have. In one day I was able to practice my German with some Germans, practice my Mandarin Chinese with a Taiwanese young lady who was working at the help desk here for the Forest Service, and able to practice some Spanish. So that was, plus English, that's four languages in one day, that's pretty fun. Just a status update on my hip situation. Uh, I've been walking really short walks lately. I don't know, 20, 30 minutes of walking. Just don't run a push up much more than that until I see a specialist. But I still wanna get out and see some of the sites here in the national parks. So I'm doing that and taking lots of rest. But that said, uh, it's not looking good. Still having hip pain. Maybe I'm just noticing it more now, not sure. But anyway, just finishing up here at the, uh, at the geyser area. Gonna head on to the next site. I'm at Gibbon Falls at the Overlook. It's a small waterfall, but it's quite gorgeous, quite a beautiful view. West entrance now of Yellowstone and I've decided to go ahead and leave the park. Uh, Old Faithful is just ahead a little ways but I've seen it twice and to be honest it's just 
not that impressive. Once you see it, you're like, eh, it's just, it's just okay. I mean, it's it's cool to see a geyser like that the first time, but after once, there's really no reason to go see it again. So I apologize if you're expecting to see Old Faithful. Not on this vlog. There's many, many videos of it. Uh, I'm going to head out and start heading into Montana and see how far I can make it towards the next national park. I've arrived in Bowman, Montana, so I'm going to be spending the night here and tomorrow I'll be driving another three or four hours up to Missoula and uh, working my way towards the Glacier National Park in Montana, which is my next park on my list. That's all I have for this episode. Thank you for watching. Savor the moment. See you next episode.